Hi, I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Cot, and today I'm making cannoli arancini. Now this is a dessert nobody asked for, but it wandered into my brain one day and insisted on existing. So here it is, a Frankenstein treat of two Italian classics, arancini and cannoli. For the uninitiated, an arancini is essentially a fried rice ball. Usually they're comprised of orbs of leftover risotto that are breaded and deep fried. I'm sure it goes without saying, but arancini tend towards the savory side, usually served as snacks or starters. Cannoli, on the other hand, are an Italian dessert featuring tubes of deep fried pastry filled with cream and garnished with all sorts of things like pistachios and chocolate chips. Both are very different and equally beloved. So to say that I'm wandering into dangerous territory would be an understatement. But let's press on and start where any good arancini starts, with the risotto. Now these cannoli arancini are sweet, so that means we have to make a sweet risotto. And that starts with a lot of milk, five cups of 2% to be exact. Pour the milk into a large saucepan and place it over medium low heat. You want to heat the milk very carefully. You don't want it to come to a boil at any point in the cooking process, but you do want to keep it on the verge of simmering. Once steam starts to gather on the surface of the milk, <laughs> okay guys, we're on, a, we're on a tight schedule. Once steam starts to gather on the surface of the milk and it feels like hot bath water to the touch, add half a cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of orange zest, and your aromatics of choice. And the aromatics of your choice. Choice aromatics. <laughs> and aromatics of your choice. I went with two star anise, eight green cardamom pods, eight whole cloves, and one cinnamon stick. You can add or take away any or all of these whole spices based on what you have in your pantry. I do feel that the cinnamon stick is non-negotiable though. Don't forget to finish with a healthy pinch of salt. Once the aromatics are in, bring the milk back up to bath water temperature. Once it's there, transfer it to the back burner and place it on the lowest possible heat. Place a large deep skillet or brazier on the front burner and add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Melt the butter over medium heat and add one and a quarter cup of arborio rice. Toast the rice until it begins to crackle and emits a nutty aroma. This should take three to five minutes. Once the rice is toasted, start ladling the hot milk mixture into the rice, two ladles full at a time. Use a small fine mesh strainer to ensure you're not adding any of the whole aromatics to your rice. Stir the rice frequently until the liquid is absorbed. Add two more ladles full and repeat until the rice is tender and creamy. When you're nearing the end of adding your milk mixture, be sure to turn the heat underneath it off. It's more liable to come to a boil even under a low heat when it's significantly decreased in volume. When the risotto is done, take it off the heat and stir in one cup of full fat ricotta. Transfer the risotto to a resealable container and chill for at least three hours or overnight. Once you finish making the risotto, you can quickly make the ganache. Chop 225 grams of dark chocolate finely. Add them to a bowl and set aside. In a small saucepan, heat half a cup of heavy cream until steam gathers on the surface and bubbles break around the edges. Immediately take the cream off of the heat and pour it over the chocolate. Let sit for a minute or two before whisking to form a thick, glossy ganache. If you have any stubborn chunks of chocolate that refuse to melt, you can pop your ganache in the microwave for 15 seconds to encourage them. Cover and chill the ganache in the fridge for at least two hours. When you're ready to assemble the arancini, place 250 grams of cannoli shells in a large food processor and blitz until you have a fine crumb. Transfer the crumbs to a bowl and set aside. In another bowl, pour three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. And in yet another bowl, crack two eggs and lightly beat them. Take two tablespoons of the chilled risotto and form a disc using your palm. Place one melon ball sized scoop of ganache in the center and enrobe the ganache with the risotto. Refine the shape and transfer the finished arancini to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Repeat until you run out of risotto. I found it helpful to heat the melon baller in hot water before scooping the ganache. Pre-scoop a couple servings of ganache before handling the risotto. It will speed up the forming process. Once all the arancini have been formed, it's time to bread them. Start by rolling them in flour, followed by egg, and finally toss them in the crumbs. 
Return the breaded arancini to their baking sheet and set aside. This is a good time to start heating four cups of canola oil. When all the arancini are breaded and the oil reaches 350 degrees Fahrenheit, drop four to five arancini into the oil and fry until golden and crispy. You won't see a drastic change in color as the cannoli crumbs are already fairly golden because they've already been deep fried. Yes, you are double frying pastry. Best not to dwell on it. When the cannoli arancini are golden, place them on a cooling rack placed over top of a baking sheet. Let cool slightly. Serve the arancini warm with a dusting of icing sugar. You can serve these alongside espresso or something stronger. I quite enjoyed mine with whiskey. And there you have it, cannoli arancini, a dessert that's a bit much in the best possible way. I hope you give this one a shot. And if you do give it a go, let me know how it went in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for cooking with me. I'll see you next time.